Hello and welcome to your 90 second SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use an extended event session to monitor system performance. In my last tutorial I showed you how to create and configure an extended event session and just in case you are just tuning in and didn't do that last tutorial that's okay, I'm going to really briefly run through the steps right now. I won't get into any details hardly, so if you want uh, further details, please go back and watch my last tutorial. But this will be a good little refresher even if you did watch the last tutorial. So to begin, to create and configure an extended event session, and expand management, then extended events, session, Here's the one we created. I'm going to delete it. All right. Okay. Here we go. Right click. New session wizard. Then click next. Call it query monitoring. Okay. Just like before. Check in this box. New this event session template. And we are looking for query detail tracking. Next, we're going to call the event library login. Alright, we can click it, we get a description, like the arrow, and it comes over here to select the events. We want to get rid of module underscore in, but the other arrow takes it away. We will now click next. Now we're going to select database underscore name, click next. Now under additional filters applied to all events, we're going to click here. And now we are looking for SQL server dot database underscore name, the operator drop down. We're going to leave it set to equals as you can see. We have all these to select from. And then we're going to call this AdventureWorks 2012. Okay, we're good to go. Next, we're going to select Save Data to a File for Later Analysis. We're going to change this from 1 gigabyte to 50 megabytes. I think I might have accidentally forgot to change this to megabytes in the last tutorial too. If I did, I apologize. Please forgive me. And we're going to uncheck enable file rollover and we're going to uncheck work with only the most recent data. And we're going to click next. Alright, we're going to click finish. We're not done yet. We still have to click start the event session immediately after the session creation and watch live data on screen as it's captured. Now you will see, notice that that went from looking like this, like always on currently is with the red little stop arrow to a green little play arrow. So that's how we know we're good to go there. Now, now let's see how do we use an extended event session to monitor system performance. Okay, we're going to expand our databases folder and you can uh, right click new query or you can just click the new query button. I already have it up and waiting and we have this little we're using eventual with 2012 select all from production dot transaction history. Okay, we want to execute this. Okay, good to go. Now we're going to go back over here to the query monitoring live data tab here. Alright. And uh, we see a set of events that we just generated. Now, because the buffer reads the data asynchronously, there may be as much as a five second delay. That's okay. Um, so if you didn't see something for a second, well, you probably do by now, by the time I ramble on, but now you know why. <coughs> okay. Um, There we go. It appears there was even more than a five second delay. So as you can see now, I just paused it for a second and uh, we have further events listed there. Okay, 
So, now, what we're doing is we're going to locate the record where the name column is SQL underscore batch underscore completed, and we're going to click that record, and then information about the event will appear in the details tab. So again, that was SQL underscore batch underscore completed right here. There we go. And we see the details are down here. Now, what we are going to do is we can click this, and we can see there it is. That's the uh, query that we executed. And to verify that, we can go over here. Ah, there it is. Okay. So again, to get to that, boom, just double click that. And I can clearly see um, that this is the query that was captured by the extended event session. Okay. So now, click OK. And we're going to close the query monitoring uh, live data tab. But um, this does not stop the extended event session. It's still running in SQL Server. So, okay, and how we stop it, okay, get rid of it first. Now we're going to go over here to query monitoring, right click, and now we hit stop session. Okay, and we see the little red arrows back so we know that it's definitely been stopped. All right. Okay, now you suddenly see, whoa, we're on a completely different page. How did that happen? Well, that happened because I got up to get a glass of water. I paused it. I got up to get a glass of water. And then I proceeded with the next step and forgot, oh, yeah, I have to unpause it. So, anyways, what I want you to do now is navigate to this location. And what you're looking for is query monitoring underscore and a long string of numbers here, numeric string here, and it's a dot .xel file, and that's going to be in the typical spot. As you can see, I'm showing you C drive, program files, SQL Server, MS SQL 11, MS SQL Server, and you're navigating all the way to the log is the final folder, and in that log folder, that's where you will find this. Once you find that guy right here, click, double click on that, and it will pull up this guy right here. Okay, so now that we're here where we want to be, um, what we're going to do is we're going to click the grouping button right up here, all right, and we're going to see the grouping dialog box appear. Now, under available columns, we're going to click name right here. And then we're going to click the arrow to move it over to the right to the columns group on. All right. Good to go. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and click OK. All right. Now, if you have, a say, a lengthy extended event session, grouping the event name will offer additional insight into the recorded events, which would look something like the image that you see right here. Okay. Now on the toolbar located above the tab, we're going to click right here, the Filters button. Now in the Filters window, we're going to click the Set Time filter right here. All right. And then we have this little uh, handy-dandy slider here that we can use to restrict the current display of events to a time frame precise to the second. Uh, we can add other filters here to help us make sense of a large extended events. Uh, data set, but for right now we can just go ahead and click OK to accept the settings and filters. All right. Now, um, on the toolbar located, we're going to uh, click the Choose Columns uh, right here. Choose Columns. All right. Now, what we're looking for, we're looking for database underscore name duration batch underscore text and session ID in the uh, available column screen and we're going to use the arrow to move them all over to the selected columns window. Okay, and then we can use the up and down arrows to arrange the columns in any order that we like. Okay, so let's first grab this. Okay, there's where we want it to go and we want what else did I say? Batch underscore text. Yep, got it. Uh, duration, got it. Um, and then there was session ID. 
was, I believe, the last one that I was looking for. And there it is. Session ID. And then, like I said, you can move it up and down to arrange them in any order you like. And then we just simply click OK. And then back in the query monitoring tab, we're going to expand the SQL underscore batch underscore completed group. Okay. And there we see it right here. And you can now see more data for each event, including the statement you executed earlier. Uh, and that begins with use AdventureWorks 2012. Which is, you just have to, right here, see? And there we go. Pretty cool, huh? So, that does it. You now know how to use an extended event session to monitor system performance. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. Thanks.